Well, this morning's message is going to be a little bit tailored and maybe emphasized towards these 11 confirmands on this rite of confirmation Sunday. But I think you'll notice rather quickly that the Word of God and His truth is really applicable to all of us. And so as we talk about baptism and the promises of God in our baptism and what confirmation is really all about and what happens next, that there will be words of grace and mercy for each one of us here this morning. And so I want to begin by talking about uh, one of our favorite movie series in our family. You've heard me talk about it before, The Lord of the Rings. And uh, when Joshua was growing up, we'd usually send him to bed before we broke out The Lord of the Rings and, uh, you know, just weren't sure he was quite ready for some of the scenes in, in The Lord of the Rings. But as he got older, we'd let him watch more of it and more of it. You know, at first it was, well, you can watch Bilbo's birthday party. That seems relatively okay. But, uh, you know, later on, but then he would sit on my lap through the process and I, you know, we'd talk things through, and we'd laugh, and we'd cry, and we'd enjoy things. And there's this one scene that I have always found extremely powerful in the Lord of the Rings series, and it's when two brothers, Boromir and Faramir, they're both in the army of Gondor, and, uh, and Gondor's been under attack for years and years. And this one scene is when Boromir and his, and his soldiers have won the battle, defeated the orcs, sent them running, and Boromir says to his brother, Remember this day, little brother. Remember this day. This is a good day, is what he says. It's a victorious day. Remember this day. And it's only a few minutes later in the movie that he says the same line, but in a completely different context. Because now it's uncertainty and there's fear. And it's, you know, what's going to happen next? And Boromir says once again to his little brother, remember this day. I have a short poem, actually, to identify with both brothers during this time of tremendous victory and also some tremendous sorrow. So the first portion of the poem is from Boromir's perspective. He says, Remember this day, little brother. We are victorious, and today we are free. My pride for you swells, little brother, your strength. I only wish our father could see. Banners fly in the sky, little brother, and we drink ale and remember the dead. I rush to embrace you, little brother and utter words that our father should have said. But now I must leave, little brother, because duty points to a land far away. So remember, I love you, little brother. I shall return, turn to hope and not dismay. But if you're familiar with the story of the Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings, Boromir does not return. He dies in a battle. And so the second part of the poem is from Faramir's perspective. He says, I do remember that day, my brother, I would gladly have gone in your stead. Now your horn lies cloven in trembling hands. In my heart now I know that you are dead. I remember that day, my brother, for now it is all I have left. The white city mourns and father is lost while my own wounded heart lies bereft. I remember that day, my brother. And so whether it's in good times and glorious times and victorious times, or times of struggle and doubt, hardship, remember this day. And so for the confirmands, remember this day. This is an important and special day. But really for all of us, all of us who have experienced the promises of God in baptism and the opportunity to say yes to God, remember this day because it is a victorious day. Hard times will come. But then all the more, we need to remember this day. Remember this day because it says something very important about you. Remember this day because it is set apart from other days and because it sets you apart as well. So remember this day. I have three points I'd like to just emphasize this idea with. And so the first one, the foundational point, is that you are God's child, right? because you've been declared to be. First point, declared to be. You are God's child. And just we could stop there for a moment. That says a lot in and of itself. You are God's child. Declared to be in your baptism where God said yes to you. We like to emphasize that truth over and over again because it is so important for us to, to recall that repeatedly, that God has said yes to you, and he declared something about you. He declared you to be his child. See what great love the Father has given us that we should be called God's children. 
and we are. I love the way John emphasizes that. You've been declared to be God's children. He has lavished his love on you, and that's exactly what we are. We are God's child. Of all the identities you could say, that what's, you know, when somebody says, who are you, what's, the, what's important about you, the answer could be, I'm God's child. And he has lavished his love on me. He has declared it so. And that's important. I was reading the Declaration of Independence again this last week, and there are some profound and powerful statements in that document. You know, what, what the Founding Fathers wrote about us as a people says that we are all created by God and equal in value. Right up front, it says this is who we are. This is what we need to remind ourselves and be remembered of, is that we are created by God and equal in value. They go on and say, and we all have certain rights that have been given to us by our Creator, and they're not to be taken away. In fact, they go on and talk about what the government's job is, that the government exists to protect us, and they are given the responsibility to create an environment in which we can be secure and free to live our best lives. That's what our Declaration of Independence says about us, who we are and what's been promised to us. And those, the founding fathers, those who wrote it, they were giving their lives into this and willing to die for it because it was so important to them and what it said about us. In our baptism, God says something about us says that we have been given gifts of family when he put his name upon us, given forgiveness of our sins, and given us the Holy Spirit who continues to work faith within us. He's made promises to us, and he's made declarations about us, and Jesus gave his life for it and for you. And so in our baptism, we receive these gifts, and we are set apart as a holy nation, a royal priesthood, God's chosen people, his children. We have been called that glorious name. And so remember that in your baptism, God says yes to you. God declared something about you. He declared it to you, and he declared it about you to others. And that's one of the ways he lavishes his love on you. Now, parents in the room, right, we love our kids. We love them. I love my kids. And we love to tell other people about them. I mean, if you ask me, how is Shelby doing? How is Joshua doing? You better sit down for a little while because I've got some things to tell you. And so we love to talk about our kids and share that with other people. We're proud of them and we're thankful for them. But what I'm really joyful about with regards to my kids is when I get to tell them things about themselves, about what God says about who they are, what I think about them, and when they believe it. Right? When we get to tell our kids who God says they are and what God says he thinks about them and how much he loves them and when they believe it, that's an incredible moment when they can accept those promises. We just lead us to our second point is accept the promise. Accept it as promised. You've heard it said already. I want to repeat it again just because it's, while it's simple, it's so important. Confirmation is saying back to God what he has already said to us. God has said yes to us on our baptism and confirmation. We say yes back to God. It's an agreement. God has said these things about us, and we say, by faith, I agree with you, God. I accept the promises that you have made to me. I accept what you have said to me, and I'm going to live in that agreement. John writes, dear friends, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet been revealed. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. So here there is a moment of both now and not yet. We are God's children now. In baptism, we are God's declared as God's children. And yet there's a, a part of it that we have not yet realized. That John says there's still something to look forward to. We will be like him when we see him as he is. Now, one of the things parents do, I think, faithfully and pretty well, at least I hope, is give their kids compliments. Say, well done, praise them, encourage them, tell them what they love about them, what's good, and, and give them those compliments. Say they look beautiful, they look handsome. I'm guessing some of parents said that even this morning, right? You look wonderful, I'm so proud of you, those kinds of things. 
And sometimes kids will say, oh, you have to say that. You're my mom, right? At least that's what I said. I mean, when my parents would say things, I'd say, oh, you have to say that. You're my dad. You're my parents. I mean, it's not going to reflect on you very well if you say negative things about me. And so, you know, I'm going to say nice things. And we do that with our children as well, and we give them compliments. But sometimes they aren't always accepted or received that way. But let me tell you something, parents, right? We don't have to say them. And unfortunately, I know that there are some parents who don't say those things to their kids. But God says them to us. He doesn't have to. But he says these things to us. And while we could say, oh, God has to say that, right? He created us. It's going to be a poor reflection on him if he says otherwise. We are his reflection. And we are the reflection. John says right here, we will be like him because we will, we will see him as he is. Absolutely, we're a reflection. Right? And when people look at us, maybe they'll see Jesus. Now, sometimes my kids will say jokingly, right, when they do something, or I even sometimes correct them for something, and they look at me and say, well, where do you think we got it from? Right? Wonder where we got that from. Well, you got it from me. I know. I mean, I, I heard those words out of your mouth, and I know they came out of mine before, you know? And so sometimes they're good things. If they're good things, it's probably their mother. If it's bad things, it's me. And, but still, we kind of look at them and say, yeah, you got that from me. And John is saying, what have you received? What do you get from God? So that when people look at you or, yeah, I wonder where I got that from. I got that from my Father in heaven. So remember this day. Remember this day because I guarantee you it will require faith to accept what God is saying about you. It will require faith to receive that declaration that God has made about you. See, through your life, lots of people will say lots of things about you and to you. And there will be those declarations made, and some of those stick with us for a long time. Things that were declared about you or to you, even maybe when you were young, maybe when you were in grade school, and some of those you can recall today, they stick with you. So remember this day, because on this day, God says, you are my children whom I love. Trust in your, fa your Father in heaven. And I am convinced that your Father in heaven is right now saying to you, look, that's my kid. Look, that's my kid. Not just to the 11 confirmands, but all of his baptized children that he lavishes love on, he says, look, that's my kid. And he is thrilled to call you his child. And he wants you to thrive. So no matter how many birthdays you've had, no matter how long ago your confirmation was, when you said yes back to God, God is saying to you, that's my kid. And he's proud of you. And so our last point, as I mentioned, he's thrilled to call you his child. He wants you to, in your faith, he wants you to thrive so let's live in full. That's this idea, lived in full. The redeemed life is characterized by continually saying yes to God because he has said yes to you. God is continually saying yes to you, and so we respond by continually saying yes back to God. That is the redeemed life. Martin Luther said it this way, we should roll out of our bed in the morning, and the first thing we do is remember our baptism and remember the promises God has made to us and say yes back to him daily. This isn't a one-time event, confirmands. This is daily saying yes back to God because he has said yes to us. Everyone who has been born of God does not sin because his seed remains in him. In fact, he is not able to sin because he has been born of God. So listen. Listen. What God is saying here is that he is the kind of father who says you can do no wrong. We know parents like that, right? That their kid can do no wrong. And that's what God the Father is saying about you. You are his kid, and he says you can do no wrong. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, we don't know this to be true from experience and observation, that kids tend to go one of two ways when their parents believe they can do no wrong. They either go out and do whatever they want to do, right, because their parents are going to say, oh, not my kid. They didn't do anything wrong. They can't do anything wrong. 
Or they go out and they live a life of trying to please their parent who believes they can do no wrong. And so your Father in heaven says, he's not able to sin because he's been born of God. And our yes back to God then is, God, I want to please you because you are saying I can do no wrong. How do I live that life as someone who has been declared forgiven? So in just a few moments, you will have the opportunity to watch the 11 confirmands in a video to speak about their faith. They're going to make their statement of faith for all of you to hear. And I know that you will be blessed by it. And hopefully it will remind us of the declarations God has made to each one of us and that we each have this blessed opportunity to say yes in faith to God. So remember this day. May it fill you with confidence and hope and an eagerness to live this life of fullness. Jesus says, and it's recorded for us in John chapter 10, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Jesus says to us, his children, he came that we might have life and have it in abundance. So remember this day. This is a glory kind of day. Remember this day, because there will be more glory days. Father in heaven, we thank you very much for the way you love us, without strings attached, but just in abundance. And so, Father, by faith, I ask that you would help each one of us to receive your love and grace, and in so doing, be able to say back to you, yes, and live the life of abundance that you have for us. So, Father, please bless us now as we hear these statements of faith. May it stir in us a response that pleases you. In Jesus' name.